I'm calling the meeting of the Home Advisory Group to order. A physical quorum of the members is not present. However, pursuant to Section 7E of the Open Meetings Act, members are permitted to attend remotely. Either one member of the committee, the chief administrative officer, or our chief legal counsel are physically present at the regular meeting location. In-person attendance and public comments are allowed, subject to attendance limitations required to ensure the health and safety of those who attend. Can we call the roll, please? Okay. Consuelo Argelis? Present. Don Bastian? Here. Ruth Broder? Amy Chavez? Here. Lori Chaffee? Here. Michael Crandall? Here. Paula Deacon Garcia? Here. William Hennep? Here. Lynn LaPlante? Here. Felicia Page? Here. Donald Pachowski? Here. Julie Renahan? Here. James A? Here. We have a quorum. Were there any items submitted for public comment or anyone present there that wishes to make a public comment? Because I can't see. Okay, next item is approval of minutes for December 1st. Make a motion. Thank you. It was, who was that that made the motion? Mike, Mike Crandall. Okay. Second, Hedef. Yes, everybody motioning, please say your name so that Marjorie can get it down. Thank you. Any additions or corrections? Seeing none, call the roll. Please. Michael Crandall? Yes. William Hennep? Yes. Consuelo Argelis? Yes. Don Bastian? Yes. Um, how is this? Amy Chavez? Yes. Lori Chassie? Aye. Oh, yes, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Paula? Deacon Garcia? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Felicia Page? Aye. Donald Pachowski? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. James A. Aye. So stand approved. Uh, item 5A, recommendation for approval of a first modification of a Home Investment Partnerships Act tenant-based rental assistance COVID-19 response program memorandum of understanding with the DuPage County Department of Community Services, project number HM19-07, updating language, dollar amounts, and extending the project completion date to September 30, 2021. COVID item. Need a motion and a second, and then discussion by staff or others. So moved, Renahan. So we talked about this uh, last month, but I know we have some new members. So this is not new CARES Act money. This is existing money that we were allowed to reprogram uh, for COVID-related rent assistance. Uh, initially, it was set up that it was, uh, it was only allowable through the end of December. We were talking last month about the possibility of that being extended. That extension did happen. So this takes it through the end of September. Um, and the update is just to update the memorandum of understanding. So it covers that extended period. Um, this is a self-administered program. So it's actually a memorandum of understanding with ourselves in some ways. It's a memorandum of understanding between the county and community development. Thank you. Any questions from any committee members? Seeing and hearing none, can we call the roll please? Okay, Julie Renahan. Aye. Ron Pachowski. Aye. Consuelo Argelis. Aye. John Bastian. Aye. Amy Chavez. Aye. Lori Chaffee. Aye. Michael Crandall. Aye. Paul Zeke Garcia. Aye. William Hennep. Aye. Lynn LaPlante. Aye. Felicia Page. Aye. James A. Aye. Stands approved. Any other business? Any members of the committee? Or staff? Seeing and hearing none. If there's no objection, the meeting will stand adjourned at 11.06. Our next meeting date is February 2nd. Hey, Lori, we're getting uh, 
uh, update from our state's attorney that we not, that we did actually do need a motion to adjourn because of the because there's no physical quorum in the room. Okay. I just I'm trying week by week or month by month to yeah, do it yeah. however you'd like me to do it. <laughs> I will take a motion to adjourn, please. Second to Charles B. Can we call the roll, please? Okay. Amy Chavez? Aye. John Pachowski? Aye. Consuelo Argelis? Aye. John Bastian? Aye. Lori Chanty? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Paula Deacon Garcia? Aye. William Hennick? Aye. Lori LaPlante? Aye. I'm sorry, Lynn. I apologize. Okay. Kalisha Page? Do we run ahead? Aye. James A. Aye. We stand adjourned. See you all February 2nd. That said, I now call to order the meeting of the uh, CDC Executive Committee to order a physical quorum of the members is not present. However, pursuant to Section E of the Open Meetings Act, members are permitted to attend remotely. Either one member of the committee, the chief administrative officer, or our chief legal counsel are physically present at the regular meeting location. In-person attendance and public comments are allowed subject to attendance limitations required to ensure the health and safety of those who attend. Can we call the roll, please? Consuelo Argelis? Present. Don Bastian? Here. Amy Chavez? Here. Lori Chassie? Here. Michael Crandall? Here. Paula Garcia? Here. William Hennick? Here. Lynn LaPlante? Here. Leisha Page? Here. Donald Pachowski? Here. Julie Renahan? Here. James A. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Before I proceed, are there any of these items that you wish to join together in a single motion? Mary and or Richard. Um, uh, I suppose that we could um, on item five, when we get to item five, um, well, not, oh, all, not all of them go to county board. So let me think about that. Well, okay. I'll think about that while while you guys do the approval of the minutes. Perfect. Okay. okay. Sorry, I almost skipped the minutes. All right. I need a, a motion for approval of minutes of December first. So moved, K Page. Thank you. A second. I could not hear that. Was there a second? Second is Pachowski. Second. Pachowski. Thank you. Any uh, corrections, additions, deletions? Okay, can we call the roll, please? Kalisha Page. Kalisha Page. Aye. Donald Pachowski. Aye. Consuelo Argelis. Aye. Don Bastian. Aye. Amy Chavez. Aye. Lori Chassie. Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Paula Garcia? Aye. William Hennick? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. James A. Aye. They stand approved. Okay, I'm gonna try 5A now. So as excruciating as, as all of these roll calls are, I do think we need to take each of them separately because that some of them go up the county board some of them stay at the policy level, and I think each one of them does need some level of staff discussion or and, and um, board discussion. Perfect, thank you. So first up is item item five A, approval of staff's FY 2021 Community Development Block Grant and Emergency Solutions Grant, Solutions Grant application funding recommendations. So move, Zay. Second, running in. Discussion. Staff first. So this is the, the bulk of your packet and this packet is, is larger than, than normally our packets are. Um, 
the key thing I would point out is that we did things a little bit differently this time. So we accepted three years of applications last year and we did the scoring review and the funding recommendations for the whole three years last year. What this is doing though, is slotting the 2021 project. So each year with HUD, we have to say, these are the projects we wanna do in this given year. And the, the, the memo that you're looking through are the recommendations for 2021 projects. So that's a long way of saying that these projects were already reviewed and looked at last year and recommended for funding. The only thing that's changed is we've advanced a couple or moved a couple up to, to slot into 2021. Um, the only other thing I was gonna note on the, on the item is that it does talk about the, the passing of the 2021 federal budget, obviously that occurred with the, connected to the stimulus bill. So that hasn't happened and we, it, it looks like we'll have the same allocation for CDBG and Health. So I don't expect any big variance in that. So um, these are the, the full applications. All the applications that we received are included in your packet. That's why you have so many different things. But again, the review and the scoring and the, the discussion of, of items happened last year, although we, any questions you have today, we're happy to. Thank you. Um, Any questions? I'll just say that in hindsight, we were genius to uh, do a three-year process last year because otherwise we would have been going through the application process again this fall while simultaneously trying to administer the coronavirus relief funds, figure out um, all this new uh, money that we're getting from the CARES Act. So um, it did save us uh, a significant amount of staff time this fall. Um, that we were able to devote to uh, the immediate concerns of coronavirus relief and response. Great. Any questions? May we call the roll, please? James A. Aye. Julie Renahan. Aye. Consuelo Argelis. Aye. Dan Bastian. Aye. Amy Chavez. Aye. Lori Chassie. Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Paula Garcia? Aye. William Hennep? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Felicia Page? Aye. John Petowski? Aye. That passes. 5B, recommendation for approval of Community Development Block Grant CARES Act public service categories of housing, homelessness, prevention, and food assistance for upcoming CDBG CV application COVID item. So moved right so, second, Zay. So uh, this is new funds, new CARES Act money. It's, uh, we had a total of 6.6 .6 million that was received. We are determining how that will be allocated. We want to get some per public service dollars available to agencies who, um, particularly if they receive CRF money that is expiring, or those agreements are expiring, we want to get contracts in their hands soon uh, in terms of 2021 and, and 2022. Um, the recommendation written up in the memo is, is to narrow the scope of what kind of applications we'll accept. Uh, we feel like these are the areas that have the greatest need and these are the areas that most match to the funding that's available. Um, you'll note in there that we made, uh, we do not want to do any direct rent or mortgage assistance in that part. Part of that is because of the large chunk of rent assistance that's coming through other people. So the recommendation or the, the request we have for the, for the, the board is to um, approve these funding recommendations. So we would release everything. We send it out to everyone, but we would be saying we're only looking to accept applications in these categories. Questions from the committee? Call the roll, please. Okay. Julie Renahan? Aye. James A? Aye. Consuelo Argelis? Aye. John Bastian? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Will Garcia? Aye. William Hennick? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Felicia Page? Aye. And Donald Pachowski? Aye. That stands approved. Item 5C, recommendations for approval for emergency tree removal for SFR project number 1777 contingent upon the determination by the DuPage County chairman that an emergency condition exists. Motion to approve, Hennep. I'll second, second. our guys. Discussion. 
So quickly on this one, this, this is a one-off. I, I don't anticipate that we would have an emergency tree removal program. This is a client who had a tree fall on her roof and had the roof prepared for habitat for humanity. She, would, she had contacted us at that time, interested in, in using some of our funds to repair the roof. Um, so she was able to ultimately get that work done through habitat, but the tree is still in a dangerous situation. We've reviewed the federal regulations and we believe this gives us a pathway to use this money to, to remove that tree. Uh, we have a letter from Villa Park stating it's an emergency, it's an emergent condition. And then I did want to add, so in the, the memo I talk about building and zoning will go out. They've, they've since completed that inspection. So building and zoning has been out on the property and they also feel like the tree really needs to be removed. So um, uh, with your approval, then I would take a memo up to the, the chairman and if the chairman signed, then we would proceed with the project and remove the tree. Questions? I would also add I, that I think moving forward, next time we look at our, um, our uh, procedures and policies regarding uh, single family rehab, I think we should build something in for emergency situations that we don't have to bring this to the CDC exact that we can just go, um, that staff can, 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 staff can make the determination with the proper documentation and just take it straight to the, to the county board chairman. I don't think this is the kind of, I mean, this is real minutia here. I don't think that this is the kind of thing that we should be also delaying those decisions by having to wait for the next committee meeting. Agreed. Any other comments or questions? Can we call the roll, please? William Hennett? Aye. Donald Pachowski? Aye. Consuelo Argelis? Aye. John Bastian? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Michael Prando? Aye. Laura Garcia? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Felicia Page? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. James A. Aye. Stands approved. Item 5D, recommendation for approval of a third modification to a community development block grant agreement with DuPage County Department of Community Services, single family rehabilitation program, project number CD19-21, increasing the award amount by 150000 dollars for a total of $419,385 and extending the project completion date through September 30, 2021. Motion. So, so moves, Zach. Second, Crandall. Discussion. So I will be very frank and tell you this is a cleanup of an item from last month that I did not do correctly. So um, this is an agreement we have with ourselves to uh, provide, we administer the single family rehab. So similar to what I talked about with Renaissance earlier, it's an agreement between the county and community development. Um, we did an extension last month for this. Um, I have plenty of dollars budgeted in the county system, but that was anticipating a 2020 agreement that basically that got messed up because of COVID. We never had a 2020 agreement. This is adding money onto the 2019 agreement so that if HUD comes out and monitors us, um, there's enough money in the agreement to cover all the expenses. So it was uh, absolutely a mistake on my end from last month that we're cleaning up this month. This gives us enough money in there to keep the work going and then extend it another three months just to make sure there's no gap. Yeah, question, you said HUD monitors. Are we reporting with HUD? So the monitoring just they can come out anytime they want? Or how is that work? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times they would typically come out in the summer. Uh, this got delayed this year because of uh, COVID, so they didn't come out. Um, and they, they would select a different program to monitor each time. So maybe they'd come out and monitor CDBG one time, or home one time, or um, we have some disaster money they could come out and monitor. Um, I have not yeah. been through one yet, so Mary may have more details to add. But. Yeah, they're great fun. Yeah, they're great fun. Um, <laughs> I actually give notice of what they're coming Yeah, through. they give us notice. So what, what would happen is um, we would be notified that HUD is uh, intending to monitor uh, say the single family rehab program for our uh, public services for a particular fund for a particular year. Um, we would be told what uh, what time period they would be here physically, um, and then they would come and uh, review all of our files extensively, um, both on the um, the documentation that we provide to HUD as well as all of the internal checks and balances within the county. Um, in addition to any kind of, they also monitor anyone that we provide funding to. So. It's an, very, it's an extensive process. Then what would happen is generally maybe three to, three to four months later, um, we get a letter from them with any, anything to be corrected. We would then um, make those corrections. If, if they found something really bad, we, we would have an opportunity to try and make those corrections. 
if those corrections were inadequate and they had determined something was um, an, an ineligible expense, we would be required to pay those funds back to HUD from County General. Yeah, are they reasonable in their determinations? I mean, it seems to me I've heard some horror stories about HUD, but is it something that we get the opportunity to correct it and they work with us, or is this kind of an adversarial I, thing? I don't know if those of you in the on the Zoom can under, can hear Don's question, but so Don's question was, um, are they are they reasonable to work with? And I think the answer is it all depends on the state. We've had um, monitors that uh, uh, that go monitorings that have gone very very well. Um, frankly, we had one on our disaster recovery funds a couple of years ago that was a nightmare. Um, and it's, it's kind of, a, a, I would say the, for the most part, um, they are reasonable. Um, we have an opportunity to respond. We've never had, um, a, you know, a really horrific finding of the disaster recovery. We had a disagreement with them over how they determined whether or not um, the cost we paid for a consultant was reasonable. I think we demonstrated seven different ways, um, measures of how we determined that it was a reasonable expense. They disagreed and we had to pay that those funds back. That's really, in my 21 years here, that's been the only time that we've had an issue. So um, I would say for the most part, HUD staff are reasonable where they're, where they're best. Um, I think is if you try and ask questions in advance so that you don't get yourself into a situation where you did something and didn't seek guidance first. So. Um, you know, they're, they have a job to do just like we do. And so is there an administrative procedure at all? So HUD makes a determination that we have to do X, we disagree with it's an administrative process that we can contest their findings or we have to go with whatever they tell us? Uh, we have to go with whatever they tell us. The question is, Don's question was, is there an administrative procedure where we dispute what they tell us? So, it kind of, I mean, you know, it does work up the chain. So if the, if the, the, the rep who came and did the monitoring made a determination that we didn't agree with. You know, it, it could go up to the regional administrator, but it all stays within HUD. There's not, there's no, there's no outside um, entity that we could appeal to. But we do our best not to make, you know, to, to keep the county out of any situation where we've done something that's clearly outside of the regulation. Okay. Any other comments? I've lost track. Do we need to call the roll now, please? Hey, James A. Aye. Michael Crandall. Aye. Consuelo Argelis. Aye. Don Bastian. Aye. Amy Chavez. Aye. Lori Chassie. Aye. Paula Garcia. Aye. William Hennick. Aye. Lynn LaPlante. Aye. Alicia Page. That was probably an eye. So okay. She's talking to me. okay. Donald Pachowski. Aye. Julie Renahan. Aye. Stands approved. Thank you. Any other business? I have two uh, short pieces of other business. Uh, one is for the municipal, municipal partners. I've been giving you all a hard time about getting your billing in and getting your request for payments in. Um, thank you. We had $1.1 million come in uh, in December, which is great. That helps us in terms of getting our, our spending or getting closer to where our spending needs to be. So thank you to um, all of our municipal partners on the call. And then uh, the other thing I just, for, for transparency to mention, so there was a, a small formula error on the on the part of HUD that reduced our CDBG and our home awards by less than $1,000. So it's not anything that needs to be approved or uh, uh, we can make the changes and, and we basically took the money out of our admin accounts, but just for the for the sake of the committee, um, it was a total reduction of 997 over what had previously been approved. Thank you. Anything else? Well, I'm a little bit remiss, and Mary, you can correct me if I'm doing this at the wrong time, but I forget the county is on a different calendar. And if we have new members of the committee, uh, would any of them like to introduce themselves at this time? And we certainly welcome you to both the committees. I probably should have done that in the beginning. Well, I can start. I'm Amy Chavez, new member for District 5, and I look forward to working with everyone. Welcome. Next, since I'm in the room, I'm uh, Don Pachowski, County Board District One. 
I've been around a few years and this is my first time on CDC. And I think it's great that you get the experience of being on various committees so you know the people and issues of what's going on. So thank you and I'm glad to be on this committee. Hi, I'm Lynn LaPlante and I'm from District 4 and I'm so excited to be a member of this committee and I look forward to chairing it in April. Um, just really excited to work with all of you and I think we have the opportunity to make a huge impact where it's so important in DuPage County. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll go and next. I'll Deacon Garcia. I oh. All right. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if I introduced myself um, when I started here. I started with Villa Park in May of this year, and um, I'm very excited to be part of this group. It's a new format for me. I used to be in Mount Prospect for over 11 years, and I last was handling the CDBG program. So it, it's it's similar, but not the same um, now that we're going through DuPage for Villa Park. But um, I'm excited to be part of this group, and um, yeah, looking forward to working uh, with you all. Thank you. I agree with all the people. Uh -uh. Number four, my name is Paula Dean Garcia. It's a pleasure to meet all of you, and I'm looking forward to meeting, uh, working. With all of you, I have such great things on the CDC. Okay, that was a little broken up, but welcome. Anybody else? Jim Zay from District 6. I've been on the board a few oh, years, and okay. this is my second time around on uh, CDC, and I uh, look forward to working with all of you. Nice to see you again. Is that everyone? My apologies for my rudeness at the outset of the meeting, but welcome all. Is there any other business at this time? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to Second, Hannah. May we call the roll, please? Okay. Tom Pachowski? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Consuelo Argelis? Aye. John Bastion? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Paul Garcia? Aye. William Hennick? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Alicia Page? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. James A. Aye. Excellent. We stand adjourned. I will see everybody on February 2nd. Thank you. Well, thank you.